Okay, let's ask Lito, who is both a uh, column writer and a political strategist. Is there a thin line between the two? And when you advocate <clears throat> for somebody that you support, is that fair game for somebody to well, well, to well talk let about me it? confess uh, that in this particular election, I mean, I've, I've tried as much as possible to follow a rule that when I get engaged by a politician, then uh, for for a particular campaign, mm -hmm. then I stop or suspend writing my columns. Mm -hmm. I made a particular exception in this case. First, because I was not engaged. I volunteered my services. I is there a Illinois. difference? Well, there, there isn't a certain difference there because you're not <laughs> paid for it. Okay. Secondly, because mm -hmm. I thought I was part of a crusade. Mm -hmm. not, not necessarily because, you know, I mean, I, I, I followed the, the yellow appeal that, you know, Noi Noi because of Tita Cori and because of Ninoy, but, but because compared to the rest of the competition, I thought there would absolutely be no change if any of the others would make it. But and so I thought it was, it, I mean, I, I, it was at that point that I decided to break what m my own rule was, which is when you get engaged, get out of column writing for a while. Okay. And I, well, I saw comfort in the fact that Billy Esposo was doing that, and <laughs> Conrad <laughs> de Quiros and every, make it Belinda. Right? No, it doesn't make it right. But I, I precisely made an exception for this uh, particular campaign because, uh, well, to be very, to be very candid about it. Also, I'm not exactly a, a in the the real mold as as uh, uh, Verhel uh, defines it. I'm not really a journalist in that respect. I mean, I just write opinion columns. No? Because I you mean, want to make a because point. Because I want to make a point. No, mm -hmm. I've, I've never been a reporter, I've never mm -hmm. been in the, in the industry mm -hmm. prior to writing my columns. No? Okay, and, and Verhel, going back to you, you, you made a statement in another show that uh, in, this, uh, in the case of Bel Kunanen, she had a conflict of interest. Well, she had, because her husband was appointed by President Arroyo's ambassador. What, what's wrong with that? Well, that makes him connected to the government, uh, conjugally. <laughs> I mean, that's close enough. Okay. I mean, the, the idea is that <laughs> and, you know, and you presume. when you write a column, uh -huh. the point that you are trying to avoid is being open to suspicion of conflict of interest. Mm. And this one is clear conflict of interest. And we don't even have to look at the connection. All we need mm -hmm. to do, mm -hmm. read, go back, and look at Bel Kunanan's column. Yes. Mm -hmm. she, she, she was... She only did two things, mm -hmm. either promote the president or apologize for her. I think she did her fair share of attacking whoever is attacking the president. However, I think, <laughs> I think the point, Verhel is really quite right when he says that it's very important that you don't have links, that you don't have com conflicts of interest. And actually, it shouldn't even be the paper who should monitor that. All right. The columnist's hmm. capacity to convince is, only depends on your own credibility. So for as long as the public is aware of that, personally, I don't know if, if the public will believe what Bel Kunanan has been writing, knowing all these things. And frankly, I don't know if her reputation stands today the same place it stood 25 years ago. Okay, but in, in the case of Lita, for example, you do disclose in the interest of transparency mm -hmm. what your affiliations are when you yes. write about certain things, right? Yes, I do that. Oh, uh, didn't Miss Kunanan do that? I think... It's also, po I can't judge what the inquiry did. Again, mm -hmm. I'm just a columnist, I'm not a staffer. Yes. But it may also be that she has no longer become an effective columnist. Okay. Only but because mm -hmm. the public may not believe her anymore, because the public is aware of her conflicts of interest. Okay, how do you judge that a person is partisan? What, what are the telltale signs well, that somebody is partisan? Huh? One if, is, is that if they're paid. All right. I'm sure that that's a pretty definite, definite standard. But, but beyond from, that... But from reading, from reading the columns, Verhel, how can you tell this person is clearly partisan? Well, one, I, the first thing I do when I read a column is look for an objective point. This is what I do. I don't look at the characters in the column. I don't look at all those names. I look at a point. I search for a point. Mm. To me, that point... Mm -hmm. is what saves a columnist, even if a columnist promotes or, or apologizes for anyone. Mm -hmm. A larger point is made. But when I don't see that point, 
I mean, there's no point in the column itself. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what I think. So if it's just talking about, yes, about what good how this good, person is yes, doing. Yes, yes. Ah, all right. It must be a larger point. I mean, uh -huh. there's the idea of a column. Do you see a lot of that in our update oh, yes, page today? Oh, a lot. More yes. than before? Oh, yes. More I, than ever. More I, than ever. I tend to disagree with one point that Rahil made, that only journalists make columnists. Mm -hmm. Because we're jacks of all trades. We know very little about very many things. But there are many people with particular influences who can write fantastic columns about things that we don't understand from particular points of view. Points of view. Take right. Michael Tan, for example, anthropologist, yes. never a journalist, but nobody can say that his column is not contributing to the national interest. All right. Okay, when we return, we'll talk about how newspapers choose their opinion writers and questions about so-called yellow columnists. That's next on Media in Focus. Stay with us.